Today is the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Cycle B. The Book of Wisdom stresses the importance of being wise in the things of God. God rewards the unselfish person and the selfish will suffer in the end. Wisdom is different from knowledge. It cannot be gained by human initiative. It is a gift from God granted to those who ask for it and are deserving of it. Solomon prayed for wisdom alone, but was also blessed with wealth. Today's reading tells us that God created everything good, and humans were made not immortal, but for immortality. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company will die. Those who chose to follow the ways of evil will cut themselves off from God and from immortality. Today's gospel contains two stories about two people who had absolute faith in Jesus. One was Jairus, a synagogue official, and the second was a woman who had suffered greatly with poor health, bleed hemorrhage, probably hemophiliac. The fate also, their fate allowed them to overcome their fear of reprimand or ridicule to receive the mercy of God they sought. Jairus was a synagogue official. He is held in esteem by the local people and was probably rich. The other person is an unnamed woman who suffered from hemorrhage. She was once wealthy, but had been the victim of greedy doctors. She is now poor and worse yet because she's ritually unclean due to her bleeding disease. She was not allowed to socialize or touch others whom she would make ritually unclean to. While walking through a crowd, Jesus asked his disciples what appeared to be a silly question. Can you imagine a very famous athlete like LeBron James was walking through the crowd celebrating his team victory and he turns and asks the security, who touched him? The disciples dismissed the question, but Jesus felt the power of the Holy Spirit leave his body. The woman's faith in the power of Jesus to cure her overcame her fear of being reprimanded for touching a rabbi. Trembling and in fear, she approached Jesus and admitted that she had touched his clothes. To her surprise, Jesus called her fondly daughter and told her that her faith had saved her. Her faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the one who could cure the blind, heal the lame, and heal the sick, resulted in her being healed and being allowed once more to participate fully in the life of the community. More importantly, she would gain eternal life. Jairus did not just ask Jesus to help him. Jairus' faith is expressed in a special request. Please, Come and lay your hands on my daughter that she may get well and live. Jairus was a synagogue official 
And the people would have known that, that about the disputes that Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees. When Jairus knelt down at Jesus' feet, in public, Jairus had put aside any prejudice he may have had against Jesus, who was often criticized by the synagogue officials. He had to forget his pride. He had to put it aside and had to ignore what his friends would have thought. His faith in Jesus' ability to heal his daughter enabled him to overcome his fear of being ridiculed later by members of the synagogue. When the messengers told Jairus and Jesus that the girl had died, Jesus said to Jairus, do not be afraid, just have faith. Even when all hope appears to have been lost, Jesus' message to us is just have faith. What is your opinion on the stories of the many miraculous seasons that Jesus had performed? Do you believe that miraculous healings can still be done in the name of Jesus today? I have witnessed God's mercy effected through prayer with my own eyes, like someone who was in a coma for months, who woke up immediately at the end of the prayer, and someone who continued to live when they were supposed to die when the life support machine were turned off. I do not know why some people are granted miracles and others, sometimes very holy people, are not cured. However, I know that those who go to confession and also forgive all those they have hurt them have been have had a better chance of being miraculously healed. In my experience, when God grants a person a miraculous cure, if he or she remains in a sinful lifestyle, the disease normally returns. If you are still struggling, be like Peter, and you can say, Lord, help my unbelief. 